keep it going. Let's go one more time. You have a lot of reason to be happy. Please be, I hate to ask you this, but please be seated for one second. Good afternoon, Grantham University graduates, families, parents, faculty, staff, and honored guests. Welcome to Grantham University's 2016 commencement ceremony. Yeah. I am Dr. Cheryl Hayek, Grantham University's interim president, chief academic officer, and provost. With a most sincere heart, I can tell you that for everyone on this stage, Graduation is our most favorite day of the year. I can tell from the sound of your voices and your smiling faces that you feel the same way too. So that we can all enjoy this day to its fullest, I'd like to start with two requests, please. First, Ensure that your cell phones and electronic devices are silenced. And second, we can't begin anything in my mind without giving thanks. So allow me to introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Nicole Buckley, Grantham University's Associate Provost to give our invocation. Dr. Buckley. Good afternoon and welcome. We gather here today understanding that we come from different places and cherish different beliefs. It is within this diversity that we stand united in gratitude for this commencement. I now ask you to reflect quietly, expressing thanks for the many blessings that we have. Creator, we are grateful for the graduates gathered here today. Give them the grace to make a difference for the good wherever they find themselves in the years ahead. For all who pursue education, grant them not only the knowledge they need in their chosen fields, but the wisdom to apply that knowledge. For those in military service, we are grateful for your protection of our freedoms. May they serve our country and all of humanity with integrity and honor. For the faculty, staff, and families who work tirelessly supporting our graduates, may they be an especial blessing to those whose lives they personally touch. Remember, graduates, your graduation symbolizes a dynamic partnership with Grantham University. You and Grantham are now forever connected. And it's through our collective commitment to create a create better tomorrow for today. And because of this, we celebrate the education that you've accomplished today. From this pivotal point onward, go forth with gratitude, humility, and unbounding strength to make an impact as an individual and as a part of the class of 2016. Now I ask that all graduates and guests stand for a presentation of the colors by the United States Marine Corps Recruiting Station, Kansas City, which will be followed by the singing of our national anthem by our, grad by our Grantham University Quartet. The quartet includes our faculty members, Eric Hewlett, Faith Bell, Teresa Conley, and student advisor Mitchell Kidd. Please remain standing until the color guard exits the stage.
dawn's early light. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets clear the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Thank you, Grantham University Quartet, for singing our national anthem so beautifully. Graduates and honored guests, please be seated. Hello again. You didn't think your faculty could sing also, did you? <laughs> when I was planning my welcome address, I was thinking about what you would want to hear, and I decided that what you would really want is for me to not talk at all so you can come up here and get your diplomas. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a teacher, I'm smart, I listened. Instead, I put a letter inside your program. I thought maybe you'd prefer to read that later and that maybe it would stick with you a little bit more than what I would say up here. But I did want to emphasize one thing I wrote in that letter. The entire Grantham faculty and staff are so proud to have been part of your lives. And we hope that we have been equally as important to you and when people are important to one another, they don't walk away. They keep in touch. So we expect to hear from you for years to come. In addition to your Grantham diploma, you take with you your Grantham community. Let us know what you're doing. You are and always will be a part of Grantham. You are simply joining a new class, the class we call alumni. And now I'd like to introduce to you my friend and colleague, Dr. Herbert London, Grantham University's Chair of the Board of Governors who will be giving the commencement address. In addition to being a colleague and friend, Dr. London is a great and compassionate educator, a world-renowned leader of think tanks, who has focused on promoting public policy to enhance global security, prosperity, and freedom. A professor emeritus of NYU and the founder of the NYU Gallatin School of Individualized Studies and a prolific author of many books on higher education, one that I believe just came out last week or so. Dr. London, welcome. The podium is yours. Cheryl, thank you for that introduction. It's a great honor for me, and it is a very special pleasure 
to be with the graduates in this class of 2016. For 65 years, Grantham has had the great and primary mission to serve the educational needs of those who serve and defend the United States of America. We have used every tool at our disposal to provide our students with an accessible, affordable, professional, relevant degree program. A program that is continuously changing to meet the needs of this time. I can't think of a better moment to congratulate the members of this class than this instant right here. Today, there are tens of thousands of civilian adult learners between the ages of 25 and 45 who also need what you have been provided. Many schools are trying to figure out how to address this concern for the adult learner. Looking out over our graduates, it is abundantly clear that Grantham, yes, Grantham, has already figured it out. I want to tell you a little story. It's a story that in some ways is rather poignant, although metaphorical. Many, many years ago, there was a football player named Sid Luckman. No one in this room knows Sid Luckman. But he graduated from Columbia and played for the Chicago Bears for George Hallis. Sidney was a very successful quarterback, but his mother had never seen him play. So he invited his mom to New York to watch the Green Bay Packers play the Chicago Bears in what was a big game of the season for Sidney. Mom goes to the game, dresses in her finery. Instead of jeans and a t-shirt, she's wearing her best dress. She doesn't know anything at all about football, had never seen a football game before. Well, Sid has a great game. Throws for more than 300 yards. The Chicago Bears win. It's an extraordinary victory. Sid has a big smile on his face, invites his mom down to the locker room, and says, Mom, what do you think? Sidney's mother looks at him and she says, Sidney, there are all of these big, angry people that are running after you. Why don't you just give them the ball? <laughs> now, I tell you that story because in Grantham, just like America, we don't give up the ball. The people in this room, the people who are earning degrees, demonstrated determination, demonstrated hard work, and demonstrated many sleepless hours. Wives and husbands can attest to that fact. Children in this audience can attest to it. And even the crying children who are in the class of 2030 can attest to that fact. <laughs> we have had many, many people give up their time so they can earn this degree. And it gives me an enormous amount of pride and satisfaction to be able to say, from the standpoint of the Board of Trustees, welcome to the Grantham family. I'd like to pause for a moment and, me and mention the distinguished members of the Board of Governors and the Board of Trustees, some here today and some not, but all of them have contributed significantly to this blessed event. Commander Everett Alvarez, John Ashford, Harry Haggerty, General Thomas Ramey, Larry Redman, Tom Macon, our chairman, Joel Jacks, George Northrup, Peter Schulte, Scott Andrews, John Ashford, Joe Esch, Christi Christian Stengel, John Ferris, and Jonathan Catherwood. They are a part of this extraordinary family. It gives me great pleasure to introduce a wonderful gentleman, a redoubtable gentleman. But before I do one last story, it's very obvious I'm a storyteller. This is a story about a preacher in the South. And this preacher is going to give a sermon on the end of days. And he says to the members of his church, at the end of days, there will be crying. There will be wailing. You hear it in the audience now. There will be crying. There will be wailing. And there will be the gnashing of teeth. To make sure 
that members of the church understand this message. He says again, there will be crying, there will be wailing, and there will be the gnashing of teeth. An elderly gentleman in the front of the church interrupted the pastor that day and said, but pastor, I don't have any teeth. <laughs> the pastor looked at him and said, at the end of days, teeth will be provided. <laughs> now, the reason why I tell you that story is because we provide teeth every day. We provide teeth so you can take a bite out of life and take a bite out of the professional experiences that are just before you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce our extraordinary leader and give him heartfelt appreciation. This is the campus president, chief operating officer, retired U.S. Marine Corps Colonel Steve Waldron. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. London. So, back in uh, the late summer, early fall of 2012, I was just like most of you. I found myself in a period of transition, in my case, after a career in the Marine Corps. And at that time, while I was on terminal leave, I thought, I don't want to be that guy, that guy that just can't let go. So I took my, uh, my Marine Corps gear, I stuffed it in a footlocker, put it in the basement, zipped up my uniforms, put them in the corner of the closet, and said, I'm moving on. And not as soon as I get that completed, I get a phone call. And it's from a friend of mine who was organizing and coordinating the American Royal Parade. And I'll tell you what, if you're from Kansas City, you know this is a big deal. It is pretty cool. And he says, listen, this year we're honoring the vets and we want you to ride along. But the only thing that you have to do is wear your uniform. I said, no. He said, the governor's going to be there, congressmen, local leaders. I said, no. He said, all right, you're going to ride in a horse-drawn carriage. I said, up by the horse? He goes, yeah, I go, I'm in. And that was my last event in uniform. And I'll tell you what, it was absolutely fantastic. But the best part was when we went to the, the post-parade event. And I met really a truly extraordinary young man. Um, turned out he was just completing law school, and he walked up and he said, hey, sir, I'm a Marine. Well, I started to talk to him a little bit, and uh, just like I said, an extraordinary young man. And uh, as he said that he was finishing law school, I'm thinking, all right, he's transitioning, he needs to learn networking, right? All those things that I'd spent all of about two weeks doing, I'm now the expert on, and, uh, and I start to coach him a little bit. Then I walked off and, and grabbed the general counsel for a large multinational that's headquartered here in Kansas City and brought him over so I could help him do this networking thing. Well, that wraps up. And he says, you know, you may want to meet my pop. He was a Marine. I said, sure. Well, he starts walking me over toward this cluster of VIPs. And then they kind of parted like the Red Sea and standing there is the mayor. And I'm thinking, what a knucklehead. I'm the only guy in the room who's networking for the mayor's son. <laughs> but I'll tell you, in the 25 minutes that followed, I understood and found out why I liked young Malik James so much. Because it's clear he had a great mentor, a great role model, a great father. He was a man that chose to serve, first in the Marines, and then moving on to bigger and better things. This is a man who used education to transition and to achieve. A cum laude graduate of Rockhurst University, a cum laude graduate of the University of Minnesota Law School. He became a partner in an established firm. Then he became an entrepreneur, starting a firm in his own right. And of course, ultimately the mayor of this great city truly a unifying voice of leadership with our, within our community. He's a man who in about the 25 minutes that we spent together um, made it pretty clear that of all the titles that he's had, graduate, esquire, partner, entrepreneur, and of course, mayor, after talking to him, I could tell that deep down in his heart, there was one title 
that still resonated and truly resonated, and that was simply the title of Moraine. It's my privilege and distinct pleasure to introduce the mayor of our great city, the Honorable Sly James. Well, good afternoon, and thanks for inviting me to join you here today for what I know for you guys has to be a really good day. It's also nice to see people so happy to graduate, but I also want to honor Grantham University's 65 years of existence. This is their 65th birthday, more than six decades of service. I, uh, I think that's an incredible feat, and I congratulate you on that. Uh, this year also marks 11 years that Grantham has been in Kansas City following the tragic events of Hurricane Katrina in Louisiana back in 2005. Uh, I want you to know how much Kansas City appreciates having you here in our midst. I hope that you have found Kansas City to be the home that you expected when you arrived here. That's the way we like to do things, is that this is our home. Everybody here is part of the family. Uh, this is a university founded by Don Grantham, who was a World War II veteran, uh, with the mission of serving those who served others and served this country. Mr. Grantham's vision was to enable and to prepare people who had spent time in the military to seamlessly transition back into civilian life. One thing I tell my staff, most of whom are millennials, um, very interesting group of people. Um, but one thing I tell them is, is that there is no civilian equivalent of military life. It simply does not exist. There are some things to transfer, but there's no equivalency. Um, today, Grantham University continues its focus on serving the military, whether those folks are reserve or active duty or retired or guard, veterans, military spouses. They also serve an even broader segment of our community, however, adult learners, by providing a superb educational experience for those seeking higher education to enable a better future for them, themselves, their families, and those they care about. And I really appreciate the focus that this university has on lifelong learning, and I especially appreciate the fact that they have a focus on serving our underserved community as well. Those who need a second chance and those who never, in a lot of instances, had a first chance in the first place. At a time when our country, and it seems like so many people are being shut out, left behind, discriminated against, Grantham University is dedicated to its students and to the future. And that creates a better future for all. To the graduates, I want to tell you that we share some similar paths. Uh, like many of you, I made a decision, and I'll be honest, I was partially aided by the draft, but I made a decision <laughs> to avoid the draft and enlist on my own. I wanted to make sure that I, if I was going to serve, I wanted to serve with the Marine Corps. No offense to any other branch, I honor every single person in every single uniform worn by anybody in the service of this country, but my father was a Marine. I'm a Marine. My son's a Marine. I couldn't break the chain. Right. And I'll tell you, of all the things that I have been blessed to do, the wife that chose to marry me, the kids that have been born into our family, all the great things that I've been able to do as mayor, all of the fantastic opportunities I had for educational experiences, nothing gave me a better foundation and a better appreciation, more pride and more honor in our country than being a Marine, nothing. In the Marine Corps, I learned some things right off the bat, and I'm sure that everybody in any service learned the same thing, particularly in a time of war. You know, you really just don't have time to worry about religion and race and, sex and sexual orientation when you're getting shot at. The only thing you want to know about the person there with you is can they shoot straight, will they cover my back, and will they be here when I need them? Everything else is secondary. <laughs> now, 
Now that's something that I would like to see become the equivalency in civilian life in this country. Because I'll tell you something, there's not a person in here who ever wore a uniform in the service of this country who would have disparaged the parents of that slain soldier like they've been done in this recent past. That just wouldn't have happened because we know that there is a word out there called honor and we know what that means. Like you, I want to believe that my time in the service was very valuable to me. I believe I served honorably, just like you. Like you, I was prepared for but anxious about transitioning back into military life. And like all of you, whether military or working adult or someone who has wanted or needed a fresh start, I understood the value of education. And education to this day remains one of my absolute biggest priorities for very simple reasons. We live in a country where more people, not less, are becoming poor. We live in a country where more people, not less, are confined to low-wage jobs. We live in a country where more people, not fewer, are angry, upset about their plight. But we also live in a country where we know that one of the great equalizers in life and in this society is education the ability to open up options based on the fact that you have had training, you have had education, that you know that there are things that you can do that you wouldn't have known but for the education you had. Education, in my mind, is a great equalizer. It sets those of us up who have come from different paths on our life on an equal playing field. And I believe it allows us to better open our hearts to to new experiences, new endeavors, new people. Frankly, I believe that any time that you can bring groups of people together that aren't the same, don't look alike, have different beliefs, come from different areas, worship different gods, eat different food, dance different dances, listen to different music, and you get them all together in one room, and what you got is a party. So I, I, I'm just arguing for more parties. But I know that education was a key in my life. It was absolutely vital. I had a very strange experience. I grew up black, surprise. Um, <laughs> and I lived in a neighborhood that was all black. But my parents were so, so focused on education that they worked multiple jobs to be able to pay tuition to send us to Catholic schools because they thought that was where the best education was back in the 60s. And this was back in the 60s. And I can tell you it was back in the 60s because I had a young intern working in the office and I was giving a speech to the summer hires uh, that worked in city government, about 110 or so. And she wrote my comments for that. And she wrote in, I stopped reading when I got to this line on about page three. And the line went something like, I know that I am ancient, but. I, I didn't really feel ancient until I read that, but, <laughs> but I know that education is a key. It is an absolutely a key. It helped me and I think it helps a lot of other people. Uh, it is critical that whether we're transitioning from one lifestyle, one life to another, we're already working in the workforce that we continue to learn and educate ourselves. Like many of you, I, I, when I was growing up and I was in an all-black neighborhood and going to Catholic schools and ultimately I went to an all-white high school, um, which was very interesting. Uh, I felt schizophrenic every day. I can tell you that when I showed up for football, I was automatically a running back. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Everybody knew me. I was kind of easy to spot in the class picture. <laughs> and I knew them. But it was a fantastic opportunity for me to learn. And I'm learning this in a time when I'm being told that I shouldn't. I'm learning this in the 60s. I'm learning this when the civil rights fight is at full blossom, when the Black Panthers are rising in Kansas City when the Vietnam War is raging and tearing people and families apart, 
when the political scene, the social scene, the music scene, every scene in, the, in this country was in some form of upheaval and change. And here I am, living in one world, going to school in another, both of which were important, and had the opportunity to understand that there really weren't that many differences in people. There were a lot of differences in opportunity and experiences that led to divergent outcomes and feelings. But at bedrock, it was just like being in boot camp and training. The main thing that you were concerned about were the things that were important to life itself. And that is, is that people are basically the same. You just have to get to know them, get past all of the nonsense and the un misunderstandings about who we are, all the stereotypes, and go forward. That's the hard part, though, is getting past all of that. I call them the isms. Racism, sexism, stupidism, idiotism, all of those isms that we need to eradicate from our society right now. And I had an opportunity to do that. So, you know, I know where you've been. I know where you've been. Uh, I had a family when I came back out of the Marine Corps and I had to balance family. Uh, I had to work through college. I had the GI Bill, nothing what it's like now, but it was enough to help me out and I was very grateful. But Rockhurst was not cheap. And so I worked 40 hours a week, had a family and yada, 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 and I loved every minute of it. Because one thing that I learned in the Marine Corps is, is that if I wanted to, I could and I would. The rest of it was nonsense. I knew that I could do whatever I had to in order to succeed. And it was just a matter of getting that in my head and going about doing it, just like all of you have done. Just like all of you have done. And as you complete your graduation today, you're gonna to take with you the knowledge that hard work does in fact pay off. And hopefully you're gonna spread that knowledge to your children. They're gonna look at you and say, mom, I thought everybody that graduated from college was like 20. And yet here you are, I'm proud of you, okay? Um, after graduation from college and law school, I, I was able to start my legal career and I've always looked at the practice and the profession of law as a service profession. We provide service to others. There is not much for a lawyer to do without a client and, without a and a client doesn't come to you unless there is some need that they have, and it's our job to fulfill and solve that need. Lawyers are supposed to be problem solvers. We're supposed to be, and we are trained to, in fact, listen to all sides of a story, apply the factual basis and the law, and reach a conclusion that is justifiable based on objective criteria. Doesn't always happen that way because even the legal system is populated with all the isms and we must eradicate those from our system. I just left the graduation, not a graduation, the lunch of the 12th annual Heartland Diversity Job Fair for lawyers and we had that same conversation there. But the military also taught you about what it means to be of service to others and to give back. And the service that we can do here is to change what's happening in our own backyard. So at the beginning of my first term in office in 2011, I went to the uh, US Conference of Mayors in Baltimore. That was my first time and I'm, I'm the new kid. Literally, I was elected in May and this conference is in June and I'm just happy to be there. And I'm sitting around and this guy comes up to me and he's this Ralph Smith, Annie Casey Foundation, and he starts to talk to me about third grade reading and the national campaign for grade level reading. And I'm saying, okay, what's so big about third grade reading? I don't get it. He was urging mayors from around the entire country to get involved in this effort. And I was certainly willing to listen. And he told me that uh, in the years before kindergarten, 85% of a child's brain is formed. 85% by the time they turn two years old. They're all, their brain development's already taken place. But this country only spends 5% of public investment on those two important years. So as with a lot of things, we have it bass backwards, and um, uh, we're not spending money where we should be. He talked about the research that told, tells us that a child's social and emotional domains are directly impacted by the physical 
and emotional development that takes place before they're even born. He talked about a young child's ability to sit still and to listen and to follow simple directions, to act empathetically, to understand emotions and how to deal with other children are all formed by the time they reach kindergarten. That's why I learned something else. I did not know that you could go to kindergarten unready. I thought every child that showed up for kindergarten was ready. What, I mean, what do you do in kindergarten? I was, I was very ignorant. I've learned a lot. And one of the things I learned is that a child in poverty, by the time they're three years old, hears 30 million words less than a child born in middle class circumstances. 30 million words less. Now that's striking and scary on two levels. If you're hearing 30 million words less, then your vocabulary is going to be retarded and you will not be ready for kindergarten. But if you're hearing 30 million words less, that means nobody's talking to you. And if nobody's talking to you, they can't socialize you. And if they are talking to you, what they're probably saying is sit down, shut up, and go away. Those are not productive words. So a child hearing 30 million words less means that their contact with caring adults has been more limited. Maybe not caring, that might not be the right word. People may care, they just may not know what the impact of actually spending time talking to your kid is about. He talked about the critical point in a child's life that occurs by the time they are in third grade because up to third grade, a child learns to read. From third grade on, you read to learn. If you haven't learned to read, then you're not gonna learn much after. Now, here's where the key is. 75% of the kids who are not reading proficiently at third grade level never catch up, never catch up. 75% of those kids don't graduate. A big percentage of those kids come into contact with the law. And when you are having, when you can see this and when you understand that people who build prison cells look at third grade reading in order to determine to some extent how many cells they'll need, you'll understand the connection. And then when you layer that in and you understand that 58% of all the people in prisons are black and brown, even though it's only about 28% of the population, you'll understand that connection. And then when you realize how much money we spend on prisons, incarcerating people, putting them to death, keeping them out of our sight, building monoliths to an industry that makes more money than it should, and spend so little with kids at the beginning trying to make sure that they get, avoid all of this, then you know what I mean when I say we're doing things bass backwards. Now, here's where you come in. I'm not asking you to do this, but I'm going to tell you about a program because I want you to understand that there are things out there that you can do, then there's ways that you can help. I don't want you to forget that you spent your life in the service of others, wearing the uniform of this country, defending it, protecting the things that we claim are ideals, trying to make life better. You wouldn't have done it if you didn't think you were going to make a positive difference. Your duty is not over. You are not discharged. We all have a duty to make this a better place for our own children and their children as well. And people who have been blessed with your ability to receive this quality education, who have also been blessed with your knowledge of what it means to truly serve this country, you're the ones that we absolutely need. After I talked to Ralph Smith, I came back and we immediately started a program called Turn to Page KC, dedicated to three things, kindergarten readiness, school attendance, third grade reading proficiency. We took a data dump. Kansas City is unique. Kansas City is 318 square miles. That means you can fit eight San Francisco's inside of it. We have 475,000 people, which means that our density is 1,460 compared to Manhattan, which is 38,000, LA, which is 29,000, something like that. And we have 15 school districts in whole or in part in the city. Very strange, 15. Some are very good, some are not so good. We took a data dump and on average found that 33.8% of the kids in the city were reading proficiently at third grade, 33.8. And what was astounding to me was is nobody was angry about that. I guarantee you, if you only got paid 33.8% of the time, you quit your job. But when our kids aren't reading, 
nobody seems to be on top of that. So we started Turn the Page, dedicated to those three pillars. We've worked with a bunch of organizations under an umbrella, collaborative umbrella, partnership. And after five years, we're up to 49% but we've gotten there by working with people like you who spend an hour a day, an hour a week, going to a classroom, going and sitting with a kid who doesn't have anybody else to do it with them most of the time, and reading a book. And you know what? I don't care what kind of day you've had. I don't care how rotten things are. When you sit there reading with a kid for one hour, you leave there with a smile on your face and your heart is lighter. And that child's life has been enriched by your involvement. So today, as you celebrate the end of this journey, this educational journey, at least up to this stage, some of you will probably go on for other types of degrees or learning, and I hope you do. But as you celebrate the end of this chapter in your book of life, the next chapter is just beginning. And that next chapter is for you to take all these things that you've learned, all these gifts you've been given, and use them for the greater good in some capacity. Lord knows. We are at no loss for things that need to be done, people that need to be helped, and issues that need to be served. We can't turn and say somebody else is gonna do it because that's not true. The somebody else is you. The somebody else is me. Somebody else is everybody in this room. If we all do a little something, nobody has to do a lot. So the gift that you have received is great and joyous. It is something that you have earned. But what you do from here on will define who you are. And I think I know who you are because you and I are a lot of light. We've served our country. We've done it honorably. We've done it proudly. And we're still serving. Thank you all for having me very much. Wow. You know, when I first saw that Mayor James was going to be speaking to us, I was simply impressed by the fact that the mayor was coming. But after hearing him speak, I'm sure like all of you, I am now impressed with the man. The wisdom, all that we've learned. Thank you so much. And now it's time for the hooding ceremony. I love this graduating class. The hooding ceremony is a special recognition for our master's degree candidates. During this ceremony, the dean of each of the candidates' respective college will place the master's hood over the head of the graduate, signifying his or her success in completing the master's program. At this time, would Dr. David Marker, dean of the Mark Skousen School of Business, join me at the podium. Thank you, Dr. Hayek. Well, the candidates for Master of Business Administration, Master of Business Administration Project Management, Master of Science in Business Intelligence, and Master of Science in Performance Improvement, please rise. <laughs> Dr. Hayek. As interim president of Grantham University, I am pleased to present to you the candidates who have been certified by the faculty of the Mark Skousen School of Business. Will the recipients for these degrees please come forward? Jeremiah Gregory Wozniak, Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. Thank you. 
Amanda Brooke Cunnigan, Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> Stephen Gardner, Master in Science, Performance Improvement with Distinction. Robin Denise Whitehead Rudolph, Master in Science, Performance Improvement. <laughs> Marcia Marie Hunter, Master in Business Administration with Distinction. Stacy Lynette Bernard, Master in Business Administration with Distinction. Ismael Hernandez, Master in Science, Performance Improvement with Distinction. Brittany Lopez, Master in Science, Performance Improvement with Distinction. Orlando Durr, Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. Alicia M. Myers, Master in Science, Business Intelligence with Distinction. Adam Nathaniel Johnson, Master in Business Administration. David William Butler, Master in Business Administration. Janelle Renee Hill, Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. Haley Louise Rogers, Master in Business Administration, Project Management. Melvin J. Thomas, Sr., Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> David Freed Rodriguez, Master in Business Administration with Distinction. Daniel Patrick Morrison, Jr., Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> Anthony Gullery, Master in Business Administration with Distinction. Kar Kamish Mahalia Kelly, Master in Business Administration, Project Management. Amanda Torres, Master in Business Administration with Distinction. Dorothy J. Rubin, Master in Science, Performance Improvement with Distinction. Cortia Navi Gardner, Master in Business Administration. Paul Buss, Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. Eduardo Perez Caleo, Master in Business Administration. <laughs> J. 
Joel Rico, Graduate Certificate, Human Resources with Distinction. <laughs> Daryl Bourne, Master in Science, Performance Improvement with Distinction. <laughs> Gayton Grant Glover, Sr. Master in, Bi in Science, Business Intelligence, with distinction. <laughs> Christian E. Contreras, Master in Science, Performance Improvement, with distinction. <laughs> Jasmine S. Young, Master in Business Administration, with distinction. Leroy Wares, Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> Daryl Maurice Myers, Master in Science, Business Intelligence with Distinction. Douglas Randall Turner, Master in Business Administration. <laughs> Tamika M. Hall, Master in Business Administration with distinction. <laughs> Rhonda Gary, Master in Business Administration with distinction. Carlos Woodard, Master in Business Administration with distinction. Adrian Dion Ziad, Master in Science, Performance Improvement with distinction. Brian David Malella, Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> David Omart, Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> Vanessa Renee Adams, Master in Business Administration. Andre Vapi, Master in Business Administration. <laughs> Ashley Oren Parkman, Master in Science, Performance Improvement with Distinction. <laughs> Jesse Villanueva, Master in Business Administration, Project Management. Jennifer Megan Bowles, Master in Business Administration. <laughs> Jesus Ricardo Rodriguez, Master in Business Administration with distinction. <laughs> Adrian B. Keys, Master in Business Administration, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> Pranay Tonkao, Master in Business Administration with Distinction. <laughs> Matthew Duane Vaughn, Master in Business Administration. Katherine Smith, Master in Science, Performance Improvement with Distinction. Graduates, you may be seated.
Dr. Nancy Miller will now present master's candidates for the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Will the candidates for the degrees of Master of Science, Information Management, Project Management, Master of Science, Information Management Technology, and Master of Science, Information Technology, please rise. Dr. Hayek, as Interim President of Grantham University, I am pleased to present to you the candidates who have been certified by the faculty of the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Will the recipients for these degrees please come forward? Ayinkemi Broadus, Master in Science, Information Management, Project Management with Distinction. Roger Lee Summers, Jr., Master in Science, Information Management, Project Management with Distinction. Blair E. Preston, Master in Science, Information Management, Technology with Distinction. Demarcritus R. Harris, Master in Science, Information Management Technology with Distinction. <laughs> Jorge Ruben Camara Falu, Master in Science, Information Management, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> Bonface K. Yigong, Master in Science, Information Management, Project Management with Distinction. Mark Wiggins, Master in Science, Information Technology. Terry Wayne Phillips, Master in Science, Information Management, Technology with Distinction. <laughs> Faisal Kabir, Master in Science, Information Technology with Distinction. Matthew Brooks Rickard, Master in Science, Information Management, Technology with Distinction. Jaquine Wright, Master in Science, Information Technology with Distinction. Christy Karras St. Ong, Master of Science, Information Management, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> Sharon Denise Serrant, Master in Science, Information Management Technology with Distinction. <laughs> Bridget Odessa Brown, Management and Science, Information Management, Project Management with Distinction. <laughs> Michael Keyes, Master in Science, Information Management Technology with Distinction. Graduates, you may be seated. Dr. Dana Bassara will now present the master's candidates for the College of Nursing and Allied Health. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Science Nursing, Master of Science Nursing, Nursing Education, 
Master of Science Nursing, Nursing Informatics, Master of Science Case Management, Master of Science Nursing Management and Organizational Leadership, and Masters of Healthcare Administration, please rise. Dr. Hayek, as the interim president of Grantham University, I am pleased to present you with the candidates who have been certified by the faculty of the College of Nursing and Allied Health. Will the recipients for those degrees please come forward? Faye Marie Porter, Master of Science in Nursing, Nursing Education. <laughs> Barbara Nicole Aikman, Master in Healthcare Administration with Distinction. David Brandon Rains, Master in Healthcare Administration with Distinction. <laughs> Jody P. Hollis, Master in Healthcare Administration. Melissa Carter, Master in Healthcare Administration with Distinction. <laughs> Crystal Renee Hoffman, Master of Science in Nursing, Nursing Management and Organizational Leadership with Distinction. <laughs> Bettina Coleman, Master in Science in Nursing, Nursing Management, and Organizational Leadership with Distinction. Sandra Michelle Bach, Master in Healthcare Administration with Distinction. Nicole Durepo, Master in Science in Nursing, Nursing Informatics with Distinction. Nicole Kinney, Master in Healthcare Administration with Distinction. <laughs> Patricia Ann Davis, Master in Healthcare Administration. <laughs> Pamela McLennan, Master in Healthcare Administration with Distinction. <laughs> Marie Watley, Master in Science in Nursing, Nursing Education with Distinction. Shantae Davis, Master in Science in Nursing, Nursing Management, and Organizational Leadership with Distinction. <laughs> Gail Metzler, Master in Science in Nursing, Case Management with Distinction. Wamaka Hope Uduji, Master in Science in Nursing, Nursing Management, and Organizational Leadership, with distinction. <laughs> Elizabeth Ellen Cheever, Master in Science in Nursing, Nursing Education, with distinction. Barbara Lee Patterson, Master in Science in Nursing, Nursing Education with Distinction. <laughs> Q 
Kosi Blagrove O'Connor, Master in Healthcare Administration with Distinction. Edith Nagao, Master in Science in Nursing, Nursing Informatics with Distinction. DeLacy Hennessy, Master in Healthcare Administration with Distinction. Karnika Turner, Master in Healthcare Administration. <laughs> Ryan J. Swallow, Master of Science in Nursing, Nursing Management and Organizational Leadership with Distinction. Chadwick Green, Master in Healthcare Administration. Graduates, you may be seated. That was just a joke. All master's recipients, please rise. <laughs> By virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Board of Governors of Grantham University, I confer upon each of you the master's degree for which you have been certified by the faculty together with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Now you may be seated. We are now proud to present the undergraduate candidates. I'd like to ask Dr. David Marker, Dean of the Mark Skousen School of Business, to again join me at the podium. Will the undergraduate degree recipients in the Mark Skousen School of Business please rise? Please come forward. <clears throat> Belinda Lavelle Bland, Associate of Arts, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. Susan Alexandra Swinty, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. Bruce Allen Lewis, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Leanne Alvers, Certificate in Project Management. Rodney Anthony Lee, Sr., Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Joanna Andrea Carter, Associate of Arts, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Ro 
Yoshimaya Janae Davidson, Associate of Arts, Business Management. <laughs> Raphael Triplett, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. <laughs> Kimberly Beth Winburn, Associate of Arts, Business Management, Summa Cum Laude. Misty Marie Wilson, Associate of Arts, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. John F. Riley, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Amber L. Smith, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Shatrina Porter, Associate of Arts, Business Management. Tamika Evans, Bachelor in Business Administration, cum laude. Randy Lee Jackson, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Faith Ann Osmera, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, summa cum laude. Valerie Danielle Alexander, Associate of Arts, Business Management. Kevin Lamont Anderson, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Cum Laude. <laughs> Suzanne Marie Stewart, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Cum Laude. <laughs> Brandy Quinton, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. Don Renee Hustis, Bachelors of Business Management, Human Resource Management, Summa Cum Laude. Quintarius Marquette Primer Senior, Associate of Arts, Business Administration. Christopher Santos Laxon, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Dana Winfrey, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. <laughs> Michael Guillermo, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. <laughs> Chelsea Lynn Niemeller, Associate of Arts, Business Management, Summa Cum Laude. Chanel Monet Moore, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Cum Laude. Michelle Robinson, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration. Thomas Kadic, Bachelor of Business Administration. Amanda Lee Wickencamp. Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Heather M. Bray, Bachelor of Science, Business Administration, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Roger Edward Bashaw, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Jeanette Alice Bayes, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Samantha Lee Johns, Associate of Arts, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Lalita Yvette Brown, Associate of Arts, Business Management. <laughs> James Melvin Nickerson II, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. <laughs> Amos Dozier Roll, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. <laughs> Joanna Lynn Ayers, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Cum Laude.
Arisha Rashonda Allen, Bachelor of Science Accounting. Congratulations to the Mark Skousen School of Business undergraduate degree recipients. <laughs> Graduates, you may be seated at this time. At this time, Dr. Nancy Miller will present the undergraduate candidates for the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Will the degree recipients in the College of Engineering and Computer Science please come forward? Javier Vargas, Bachelor of Science, Electronic Engineering Technology. Jason Wimberly, Bachelor of Science, Information Systems Security. <laughs> Alfonso Ruiz, Bachelor of Science, Computer Simon, Science, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Dustin Allen Neal, Bachelor of Science, Electronic Engineering Technology, Magna Cum Laude. Dustin Michael Smith, Associate in Science, Electronic and Computer Engineering. John Reed, Bachelor of Science, Information System Security. Michael Dwayne Lantrip, Bachelor of Science, Information System Security, Magna Cum Laude. Travis William Whittington, Bachelor of Science, Information Systems Security, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Carlos E. Aguirre, Bachelor of Science, Electronic Engineering Technology, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Anthony Douglas Smith, Bachelor of Science, Electronic Engineering Technology, Summa Cum Laude. Don Ocha, Bachelor of Science, Electronic Engineering Technology. <laughs> Frederick LaVon Jackson, Bachelor of Science, Electronic Engineering Technology, Cum Laude. <laughs> Scott Kester, Bachelor of Science, Engineering Management Technology, Summa Cum Laude. Brian Wayne Lefleur, Bachelor of Science, Information Systems, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Sherry Monique Scott, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science. Congratulations to the College of Engineering and Computer Science degree recipients. Graduates, you may be seated. At this time, Dr. Dana Bassar will present the undergraduate student candidates for the College of Nursing and School of Allied Health. Will the degree recipients in the College of Nursing and Allied Health please come forward? Jessica Anastasia McDowell, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Coding and Billing. Ashley Denise Bunch, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Coding and Billing. <laughs> Alma Johnson, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Coding and Billing. <laughs> Avis Antoinette Morris, Bachelor of Science, Health Systems Management, Magna Cum Laude. 
Dana Clark Morrison, Bachelor of Science, Health Systems Management, magna cum laude. Stephen Lynn Parks, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Coding and Billing, cum laude. <laughs> Brian Germain Hamrick, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Coding and Billing. <laughs> Kara Gray, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Coding and Billing. Anna Adams, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Coding and Billing. Mary Cameron, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Coding and Billing. Bernice Ogolia, Bachelor in Science in Nursing. Angela Marie Rennie, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Coding and Billing, cum laude. <laughs> Michael Southall, Bachelor of Science, Health Systems Management. <laughs> Crystal Renee Thomas, Bachelor of Science, Health Systems Management, cum laude. Golombe Lefeur, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, cum laude. Congratulations to the College of Nursing and Allied Health degree recipients. Graduates, you may sit down. At this time, Ms. Tina Freestone will present the undergraduate candidates for the School of Arts and Sciences. Will the degree recipients in the College of Arts and Sciences please come forward? Karen Tatum, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, magna cum laude. <laughs> Kurt Ledesima, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice, magna cum laude. <laughs> Davis Pagan, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies. <laughs> Dwight Douglas Dunwell, Associate of Arts, Multidisciplinary Studies. Anna Francis Jacobs, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, cum laude. <laughs> Abraham Michael Papaleo, Bachelor of Multidisciplinary Studies, summa cum laude. <laughs> Carissa Pulliam, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Angela Michelle Fitzwater, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, summa cum laude. <laughs> Shelby L. Carter, Associate of Arts, Multidisciplinary Studies. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Galloway, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, summa cum laude. <laughs> Tylesian Rochelle Andrus, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. <laughs> Tammy Kalsik, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, magna cum laude. 
Darnold George Pocaro, Jr., Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, summa cum laude. Hiram Gutierrez, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice, cum laude. Lydia Rachel Tanaik, Associate of Arts, Multidisciplinary Studies. Dominique Anderson, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, magna cum laude. Tracy Robinson, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice, magna cum laude. Angela Townsend, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice, summa cum laude. Renita Bowles, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies. Richard Dale Harkroad, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, cum laude. Kitalise Cruz Senabria, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice, cum laude. Ramon Seville Roberts, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies. Jalan Jamal Hurd, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice, magna cum laude. Damian Miguel Pouncil, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies. Jeffrey Allen Mallow, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, summa cum laude. Dion Andrew McKenzie, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, cum laude. Kenneth Quillacy, Bachelor of Science and Multidisciplinary Studies, cum laude. Christina Marie Green, Bachelor of Arts, General Studies. Juanita Wilson, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice. Mayako Valicia Winchester Henry, Associate of Arts, Criminal Justice. <laughs> William E. Wright, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, magna cum laude. <laughs> Matthew Leonard Hustis, Bachelor of Science, Multidisciplinary Studies, magna cum laude. James Allen Taylor, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice, magna cum laude. John Dennis Aaron, Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice, magna cum laude. Congratulations to the College of Arts and Sciences degree recipients. Graduates, you may be seated. We have two uh, more special degrees to hand out today. At this time, I would like to call up Dr. David Marker, Dean of the Mark Skousen School of Business, we now would like to welcome Mr. Lorenzo Grimes to the stage to accept the diploma on behalf of his late father, Army Sergeant First Class Stephen Grimes, who passed away with just three credit hours left to earn his Bachelor's of Science in Business Management. Is Lorenzo coming down? Go ahead and say this, I'll go over there.
The entire Grimes family is here, and we are blessed to have them. As Grantham University expresses its sincerest condolences, I can tell you as a mom that one of the things any parent wants is just for a little while for your child to walk in your footsteps. Lorenzo, you've done that today. Please cross the stage and walk in your dad's footsteps. This is what Grantham University is all about. Thank you. I would now like to ask Ms. Tina Freestone, Interim Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, to join me. We don't have a door for you. I'm just going to give you this empty box. I'm just going to pretend this is it. Tina. Please accept this bachelor's degree in criminal justice, which is posthumously awarded to Mr. Virgil Burden, a U.S. Air Force veteran. Mr. Burden attended Grantham since 2008 with only seven courses remaining. He was no longer able to continue due to the de deteriorating health. Mr. Burden has since passed away. Both individuals were exemplary students at Grantham and if the circumstances had been different, would undoubtedly have attained their degrees. It is my honor to confer the degrees of both gentlemen. At this time, will all the undergraduate degree recipients remain standing? By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of Grantham University, I confer upon each of you the degree for which you have been certified by the faculty together with all of the rights privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Now all graduates, please rise. This is like church. In keeping with tradition, undergraduates may now move your tassel from the right to the left in recognition of your achievement. Congratulations. Now you really may be seated. Congratulations, well done. As a flight deck firefighter, he responded to crash landings and deck fires. As an entrepreneur, he launched his own landscaping and tourism companies. As a project specialist with FEMA, he helps people through some of the toughest times of their lives. A Navy veteran, a business entrepreneur, and FEMA professional, he thrives in pressure-packed situations. He's kind of a cool surfer dude, too. <laughs> He's going to take on one more challenge today, and I think he'll meet that head-on, that of the Grantham student speaker. I'm pleased to present a Grantham alumnus, Navy veteran, Mr. Jeremiah Wozniak.
Good afternoon. When we strive for greatness, we are confronted with challenges great and small. During hardships and challenging times, we are shaped into the people that we are today. Those challenges give us the characteristics that become our strong points of who we are. Like a sword is forged from hot metal, we must be put under extreme conditions in order to be shaped and formed. July 25th, 2010, 6.30 a.m. I was standing on my stand-up paddle surfboard looking towards the Kaivi Channel, which in Hawaiian means the channel of bones, just 10 foot offshore from the Hawaiian island of Molokai. Regarded as one of the world's most treacherous channels, the Kaivi Channel is home to a 32 mile race from the island of Molokai to the island of Oahu. I was amongst over 200 other competitors all waiting for the signal to start the race. My escort boat and teammate were waiting for me 400 yards off the coast. As soon as the horn blew, we all started paddling as fast as we could towards the island of Oahu. Almost instantaneously, I felt the wind and ocean currents trying to knock me off my board and blow me off course. Trying to navigate between the swells and other competitors was difficult, but having them there helped me find my line and angle that I would be pursuing to get to the other island. Half an hour in, I was now 10 foot plus open ocean currents trying to maintain that course. When the waves would pick me up, I would be looking down at my escort boat in the trough below me, and when the wave would pass, it would completely disappear. My partner and I would take turns paddling, and while I rested in the boat for my next, my next round, I would try and hydrate and get some amount of fuel to re-energize my tired body. As we made our way to the middle of the channel, which by now was 2,300 feet deep, I remember seeing so many beautiful flying fish flying alongside me as I paddled and persevered through the soreness and exhaustion of the paddle. Some of the flying fish were up to two feet in length and some were only a couple of inches, but they were motivating me to keep going, almost like they were on my team helping to guide me along the way. I remember every time I wanted to give up or I felt like I couldn't make it, I would get extremely tired and it would become more difficult for me to paddle. When I thought positive and told myself I could do it, the paddling would actually become easier. If I looked at the island I was paddling to, which by the way still looked the same distance away from when I started, I would become overwhelmed and I'd get off balance. Focusing on the little distance just ahead of me and by focusing on just one stroke at a time allowed me to continue much easier. By the time we were a third of the way finished, I remember the wind swell had picked up, causing us to be blown off course and forcing us to paddle even harder into the wind and wave chop Otherwise, we would have completely missed the island and be blown out to sea. The last two mile stretch was the hardest since the wind was now blowing directly in my face and would certainly blow me backward had I stopped paddling. But once I crossed the finish line, I remember how elated I was that I had completed this distinguished race and having my friends there to greet me was something I will never forget. We had heard on the boat's radio that a record number of people had dropped out of the race because of the extreme weather conditions. After the race, I thought for sure I would go to sleep early, but the channel crossing had kicked in my endorphins and I was on what some might call a runner's high. Looking back on the race, I can compare it a lot like my time gaining my education. Looking at my goal from the starting point and seeing what looked like such a huge challenge and thinking, I know this goal is attainable, but it looks so difficult. The boat escorting me was Grantham University, helping me across my quest. My partner in the boat was the amazing faculty we are so blessed to have facilitating our learning environment. The other races were like other students trying to complete the same goal. We all took different paths and had individual challenges during our crossing, but hopefully we all made it to the finish line. Some contestants may be having to opt out of the race because of conditions and hopefully retrying again next year. The flying fish cruising alongside me reminded me of the other students in my class and my student advisors who were there for me along the way, enriching my educational journey. That last stretch of the finish line can most definitely be the most challenging, but so rewarding once that goal is obtained. The energy that I felt after the race is the confidence that I used and experience that I received to apply for the job which I currently have. Thinking about how much easier it was to just focus on the current leg of the race I was on and thinking about just focusing on one paddle at a time help me to handle my situation and strive for the finish line. Each and every single one of you has your own unique special story. What it took for you to be sitting here today 
in front of your peers and accept this honor from our amazing university. Each one of you has overcome those unique challenges and has persevered. And I am honored to represent you all today and want you to know how important what you have achieved is to you, your family, and everyone who you have contact with personally and professionally. Use the energy from today and apply it in everything that you do. Use it to better yourself and others. Please help out one another in your life. Try and enrich others. No one said it only had to be one good deed a day. Make it many. Give without expecting anything in return and you will truly be blessed. Committing yourself fully to even the little things in life will give you the opportunity to grow into even someone better. Just think about how positively we have been impacted by Grantham University. Think about what we as a collective can do to positively impact so many people as we continue our journeys. When I think back on the people who helped me along my journey, I focus on three amazing women in my life who made this journey possible. One of those women is my amazing, ever-loving grandmother, Olive, who gave me confidence and the support I needed. My mother, Suzanne, helped motivate me and give me the tenacity to pursue my lifelong educational goals. And my best friend, confidant, and life companion, Iris, who was the one that gave me the capacity to persevere and encourage me to start the pursuit of my higher education. Without these three amazing, strong women, I could not be up here today. I was fortunate to be able to be surrounded by these life changers. Try and find people in your life that are on your team and can help you along the way. Be that person in somebody else's life who needs that guiding light. Do not second guess yourself. Commit yourself fully to your dreams, desires, and goals that are placed in your heart. I fulfilled a lifelong dream when I surfed waves so big, the Coast Guard told me their buoy system reported 100 foot waves. I guess I hang out with the wrong crowd, right? <laughs> this is something that I had mentally and physically trained for all my life, but I always knew that one day, that day would come. You have prepared yourself for your goals. Continue to keep that frame of mind in everything that you do. So when your big day comes, you will be ready, which you have prepared yourself for. When I was a crash and salvage flight deck fire in the Navy, we trained so much that when an actual incident would happen, it would become second nature to us. We could handle a fire or a dangerous situation with confidence and calmness. The educational preparation you gave to yourself will help propel you into your next successful adventure. Have the mind of a student for the rest of your life. Never stop learning, never stop growing, never stop evolving and metamorphosing into the person that you are supposed to be. And in closing, when you look back on your journey, remember those challenging times. Remember those hardships. Think about what it took to overcome that. Think about the success that you achieved. Use that as an example to yourself to remind you when you look ahead and see those challenges that seem too big. Remember, just focus on one paddle at a time. I did it, you did it, and we did it together. Aloha and mahalo. Jeremiah, thank you very much. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, let's see, what do we have? An appreciation of Jeremiah Wozniak, student speaker. 2016 commencement ceremony, August 6, 2016. But wait, there's more. There's a uh, tradition in the military, it's known as coining. And for those of you that don't know what it's about, legend would have it that it dates back to World War I. And an American flyer that was flying with a French unit shot down behind enemy lines. He was trying to make his way back to the Allied lines as the Germans were in hot pursuit when he ran across the French. The French, not exactly recognizing this new uniform to the theater, thought at first that this flyer was a spy. And as they were getting ready to perhaps do their worst and shoot the spy, he presented a medallion. And they recognized that medallion from a French flying unit 
and instead of shooting him, so the story goes, rewarded him with a bottle of wine and his life. Since that time, it's been a tradition to coin those that are in your squadron, your unit, part of your team. And with respect to Grantham University, when we do this, we're saying thank you, you're a member of the family, you're part of the team. God bless. At this time, I'd also like to recognize all of our active duty, guard, reserve, and first responders who have graduated here today. This year, we've given all of these great young men and women a special cord to wear. This time, if you have a red, white, and blue cord as part of your regalia, would you please stand and be recognized? It's important to note that just about all of these great men and women joined the military in time of war. So if you happen to see them afterward when we're enjoying some, uh, some camaraderie, please go up and thank them and tell them what you think. I'd also like uh, at this time to ask our faculty and senior leadership team members in attendance today to stand to be recognized. Please join me in a round of applause for their hard work guidance, dedication to the success of our students and graduates. And now I welcome Julius Leary, Dean of our Foundations Program, and Dr. Nicole Buckley back to the podium to introduce the university's outstanding faculty member. Our faculty are a vital part of everything that we do. We take great pride in recognizing their achievements, a monthly, quarterly, and our annual basis when we offer this award. It is with great honor this year that uh, we present this award of Outstanding Faculty Member of the Year to Sarah Powell. Sarah, please come forward. <laughs> Sarah is always willing to tutor students on the weekends, have spirited debates with business students that don't quite believe that science courses are vital to their business education and career plans. <laughs> She will defend the science courses to the end. She has also made continued contributions to her discipline and to the College of Arts and Sciences. You are a shining example of our faculty, and I'm very happy to award you with Faculty of the Year for 2016. Please applaud Sarah Powell, everyone. Before we officially conclude today's ceremony, I wanted to go back to something I said when I first came up here. Do you remember I told you we were family and we care about you? And I said we're forever connected, right? You're the class that's now called alumni. We decided to do two things to kind of prove to you and live that promise that you are VIPs, that you're very important people to us. So the first thing we'll be doing that's brand new, and we're gonna start it off with this alumni class, is we will hold weekly president office hours. So don't leave me alone by myself during those times. I'd like you to call me. 
and tell me your open thoughts, things that you love, things that you'd like to see differently, new programs, what you'd like us to do differently. So you're gonna hear about that um, in the coming weeks. I hope you take advantage of it. The second thing we've done is initiate a new scholarship. It's called our Presidential Scholarship. And it's to help you continue to move forward in your quest for lifelong learning. Graduate doesn't mean it's the end. Commencement, the word commence, means to begin, and you are just at the beginning. How this scholarship will work is if you start your next program before September 30th of this year, Grantham is going to cover the cost of your last course. That goes for all of our graduates today and all of your family and friends. So to make that a little bit more special, you're not just gonna sign up for that degree. You're gonna to have to email me personally and tell me that you wanna come back. And then you and I are gonna be forever connected <laughs> because you're gonna have my email. Now I don't take email from all 20,000 Grantham students, but I will from you. And we'll be connected and I will support you through your next program. But you have to email me and you have to sign up by September 30th. Now, I am very excited for what the future holds, a new beginning. So go forward, spread this energy you have today, encourage others and initiate something wonderful. Create positive change in the world, in your home, and in your workplace. This degree is really just the beginning. Make an impact with it and come back for more by September 30th. <laughs> now, because this is like school, we have rules on how to exit. But I wanna tell you something first. The graduation here at Kaufman is actually a historic moment. Not only are we in the beautiful Muriel Kaufman Theater, we are also the largest commencement ceremony to be held in the, conference, in the Kaufman Center. So of course we have to capture that. So here's how we're gonna do it. All of the graduates will go directly outside as you leave the theater and we're gonna take a group photo with the whole graduating class and the faculty and stage party. While we're exiting, we ask the rest of the guests to remain seated. After we've left, you can certainly join and come for the reception right outside. And so we appreciate your patience as we try to get all of us out first. Thank you all of you for coming today. I know many of you came from quite a distance. Grantham University is certainly worth it. And remember, this is the beginning. Go out and do amazing things. <laughs>